These are some of the many patients who trek daily to Mokono Health Center 4 for medication. But surprisingly, upon admission, they are all mixed up without any gender consideration in addition to being squeezed in these small rooms. According to the health center records, the center receives about 150 to 200 patients, which Dr. Geoffrey Cassidy says is an overwhelming number to the standard of a health center for. Uh, at the moment, we have got a, a very high clientele. There are many patients, high turnover, and uh, there is a mismatch between the input, those are the resources we get from government, given the number of patients we receive. Currently, Mokono District lacks any government hospital except private clinics where one has to pay heavily to access medical service, which has forced residents to turn to only government health centers to get medication. Dr. Kassidia explains that the health center has two wards, one for maternity which has only eight beds, and the ninth in the corridor and general ward which has ten beds where they admit female, male patients and children in the same ward. It's unethical though, but in the event that one is sick, he needs a service. You are left with no choice but to continue uh, admitting them the same way. He says that due to high numbers of pregnant mothers, they are forced to discharge them three hours after delivery instead of the recommended 24 hours to create space for waiting mothers who are about to give birth. Uh, this unit was initially a health center three. When it was promoted to a level of health center four, the infrastructure was not developed alongside its level. So you find that we have a maternity unit which has only eight beds, yet we deliver 15 to 16 mothers daily. This is no different to the other departments in this health center, especially at the waiting area of mothers, where some of them are seen attending antenatal classes while standing due to lack of enough seats. When it comes to medicine, the in charge of the medical store, Grace Ann Amutos, says they usually get supply of some key medicines like those of malaria, but not according to the demand, saying that sometimes they request for drugs worth 20 million and government only gives them 7 million, which is too little. Like right now we have a sufficient quartem. If uh, they need septuin, for example, or amoxil, for example, and it isn't available, then we would request them to go and seek from another source. The theater lacks basic requirements like oxygen, whereby majority of the oxygen cylinders are empty, and during operations they use manual methods to supply oxygen to a patient under operation. If you get an emergency where we, you don't have like the concentrator, all the other oxygen, you can use that one to, to uh, manually supply oxygen. Nelly Younger says, that they risk their lives while carrying major operations because sometimes they lack gloves and other major detergents to protect themselves. All right, this is a collection of infectious materials. So we need a lot of gloves, jig. You find that we are ever lacking jig. You just work like that, you improvise soap, you bring and scrub, but it is not the proper way of handling infections. She explains that the operation table in the theater is too old, which is being covered by polythene paper bags and rusty, which is dangerous for medical workers themselves and patients. To put a patient, you, you lower it and if you want to remove, you have to adjust it up uh, so that you can easily uh, remove the patient because you can't lift the patient. Eh? You, we don't have that manpower. The center was worsened by the lack of blood and a refrigerator to store the blood and despite sending requisitions to the blood bank, they have never been given blood. However, Dr. Cassidia says that despite all the challenges, the medical team is committed towards delivering health services to patients.